Well, I had a few things that I wanted to do today. I'm sitting in my summer house with a coffee, but it's starting to rain. And I think the forecast for the rest of the week is rain. It's raining again. It's blowing up a little bit and I think we're going to have rain all week so there's very little I can do outside at the moment. It's very, very disappointing. So welcome back to my kitchen garden. Now I began this video over a week ago but the weather and life have just conspired against me to get it out so in a way this is kind of take two. So I'm really, really behind with everything, um, but I'm finally planting out my peas now. So these are Ambassador. They're a dwarf variety and they will only grow to about 75 centimetres. Um, so this old shelving that I've utilised is absolutely perfect for supporting them. I gave these a really good feed last night because they were looking pretty miserable. Um, so hopefully they'll perk up and I think once the roots are in the ground then they'll romp away. So while I'm planting these you can watch some footage that I recorded earlier in the week. So I've just had a good look at my strawberries. They've got a lot of growth but I've noticed a couple of problems. There is a small amount of grey mould and I think that's because we've had so much rain so I think what I need to do is thin out some of the leaves to increase the airflow so I'll come around and show you an example those two strawberries there so I need to remove those but there has been another issue so I've just removed these leaves off of um, some of my plants and you may have seen this on yours. If you get these lacy patches, let's find another one that's quite bad. That is um, caused by the Tortrix moth caterpillar. So let me turn it over. There's aphids on there as well. So unchecked, they will devastate the leaves. So if you see any leaves with holes in, just break them off. And the birds will eat the caterpillars, so I'm going to leave these leaves near the bird feeder but no one ever said gardening was easy there's a constant battle with nature so i need to get this courgette in as quick as possible it's been sitting out here for days um, and it's putting on growth but the pot's just not big enough for it so i've just um, weeded this area it's nice and clean now i'm going to give it a liberal dressing of blood fish and bone because we've had so much rain that we've probably had runoff as far as nutrients are concerned. So I'm going to carry on working this into the soil and then when I actually come to plant the um, courgette I'm going to use some mycorrhizal fungi around the root ball to give it its best possible chance to grow well and to stay healthy. So courgettes have a fine growing habit and I have grown them up canes before now and I've also grown them in containers quite successfully but I want them to go in this bed but I want it to grow in that direction because it becomes a huge plant and I want this bed also for my peas and I'm running out of space fast. So I've had a good look at this and it is tilting in that direction so that's the way I'm going to plant it. But what I can do is if in a few weeks time it looks like it's changing direction or I've misgaged it, I can very very gently dig it up and turn it around. I've done that in the past and it's been quite successful so I better get on with it. So this has had a good soak 
and the ground is really, really wet. Good root system. Like I say, it's going in that direction, which is where I want it to go. So that's one job I managed to get done today before I go to work. just come down to this end of the garden just to sit in the shade for a bit because it is just too hot to sit in the summer house it is absolutely crazy two days ago I had to put the heating on because it was so cold today completely the opposite beautiful blue skies there's a few fluffy clouds very noisy crow but I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank those that commented on my previous video um, about the honeysuckle. Um, there's some great advice given and um, a lot of people have said that I should just be brutal with it and cut it down at base level and let it regrow um, and that way it will get rid of the powdery mildew and whatever else seems to be ailing it. Hopefully it'll recover. But Jane, um, thank you Jane for your comment. It was really, really interesting. What Jane was saying is that she'd read or heard somewhere that some plants have got an ability to inhibit the growth of others in order for them to flourish. And she wondered whether my potatoes, which she'd noticed was very close to the honeysuckle and crowding it out, whether that is um, happening with that, maybe it's emitting a hormone that's causing it to um, lose all its leaves. So, um, yeah, something that I really, really need to think about. And I was thinking about it all day while I was at work yesterday, thinking, do I move the potatoes? Well, let's see what I got up to this afternoon. So I did a lot of thinking at work yesterday, thinking about the potatoes and I've just moved three of them to over here. Now I can still get to the onions and leeks, that's another problem, that's something else I've got to think about. The sweet corns there, the potatoes are going to be harvested way before those sweet corns so that's not a problem them being there. And let me show you where they were. So we just come round here. <gasps> Strawberry ripening. You see that? There's a few in there that are starting to ripen up. Another one there. Anyway, just going to bring you round here. So this is my honeysuckle, look at the state of that. So I think, as has been suggested, I am going to cut that right down and start again. I think that's it for today, folks. I haven't got any work today, so I'm just going to enjoy the afternoon in the garden. So I'll see you all in the next one. I'm Annie and this is my kitchen garden.